Speaking of communists destroying the prosperity of the world, the World Economic Forum this year met uh, in Davos and <laughs> this is laughable. Oh. They want to rebuild trust. Yes, this is where uh, how uh, rebuilding trust after wanting to make everyone own nothing and be happy. However, as many are now realizing, this is just a guise for the globalist efforts to suppress views dissenting on their propaganda. Now, just have a quick listen to this. This is Ursula van der Leyen talking about uh, rebuilding trust. For the global business community, the top concern for the next two years is not conflict or climate. It is disinformation and misinformation. Oh, where have we heard that? Disinformation and misinformation. This is called communist surveillance, propaganda and censorship. Joining us now is Webster University assistant, Professor Ralph Schulham, a great friend of this show. Ralph, great to see you as always. Uh, what did you make? Uh, do you think uh, the World Economic Forum managed to rebuild the trust of the world in, the, in Davos this week? Well, it's so great to see all of you. It's been way too long. Yes. Um, no, I... I don't think they will, but there's such an irony, and you kind of, because you mentioned communism, but I have a sense, and I'm sure we're going to get to this topic in a second, I have a feeling that hammer and sickle is going to be, become a symbol of the right instead of the left in the month to come, <laughs> because it's farmers and workers who have been shifted to the right. So this is very yeah. fascinating. Uh, and it's kind of the, the fund alliance, and so whoever are, you know, are on the, on the you know, kind of quasi-totalitarian left. Before the show, I looked up the political career of Ursula von der Leyen, and it's fascinating. She did not win a single election uh -huh. in her entire life, but always <laughs> failed upward. So it's really like the old Soviet apparatchiks, right? They yeah. have absolutely no democratic legitimization. It's just the party that always kind of tried to, you know, put them away and they just stalled them in an ever, ever, ever higher position. So unfortunately, the comparison you made is... I think probably more appropriate than one would wish. <laughs> Rita. Well, fascinating things are happening across Europe. We've spoken about it before, this shift to the centre-right or the right in a number of countries. And even Sweden, they've got a centre-right coalition and they're making a move against cashless society. To explain that, explain what's happening in Sweden. Well, I think what we see happening, uh, number one, is... They're not entirely wrong in what they're saying. I think they just don't see that they are the problem. The erosion of trust is real. But I think the reason why trust is eroding all over the West is, I mean, look at many of the main issues that we have to deal with. And pretty much either they lie to the people, that's like the most malevolent interpretation, or they're just all horribly incompetent, or it's a mixture of both. But we have been lied in the area of energy, we have been lied to in the area of the economy, and in many ways we have been lied to uh, when it comes to the, the dealing with the, with the pandemic. So, of course, people no longer trust the government. And if now particularly those governments come in and say, so how about if we centrally control what you buy, <laughs> when you buy it, and how you buy it, right? A growing number of people says, ah, that doesn't sound right. And by the way, this is absolutely correct because it's only a small step then to say, you know, you buy a bottle of wine and pretty much the government knows, you know, you bought a bottle of wine and whom did you vote for in the last election? So these things that all of a sudden become technically possible. And I completely understand that there is a certain resistance to this. So I'm not saying that we're moving all the way towards a social credit system, but it opens venues into that direction. And what we also see happening, banning opposition parties in Germany, banning Donald Trump from the ballot in, uh, in the United States. Right. All these movements. I mean, there is a trend, ironically, that those who want to defend democracy seem to be very much at ease with potentially suspending democracy to stay in power. And that is a real danger. James. Ralph, you know, we have a big debate happening right now in Australia about a sort of universal ID, digital ID program. They tried it years ago. They called it the Australia card. It didn't go anywhere because everybody said, nah, this is a bad idea. But I would love for you to have seen where this can go to tell our Australian viewers what is the big concern because the government says, oh, no, no, it just makes it real easy to do things and your medical records are here and that's all there and it prevents fraud. They say it prevents fraud and, you know, that sort of thing. But I think a lot of people are suspicious of this and I'd love to hear you sort of explain why we should be very suspicious about the government trying to mandate this sort of collection of data uh, and what it could be used potentially for, not tomorrow, but say 
at the next pandemic, which they keep for some reason very eagerly warning us is going to come around one of these days. Oh, I can give you a precise reason why I'm worried about this. I mean, take two other countries as an example, the United States and the United Kingdom, the, your mother country, if I'm allowed to say this. Um, there is a similar debate going on. But interestingly enough, there the argument, for example, when it comes to elections is, oh, ID should not be necessary because it's apparently, which I think, by the way, is the most racist thing that one could say, that it's so hard for minorities and people of colors to get ID. But then what you just mentioned, right, apparently for the citizenship, for the legal immigrants, for the people who reside legally in a the country, they should be ID'd up to the hill. Like yes, very that's often, right. We very often hear these stories about, you know, the, these these communities that live in the shadows. But let's be honest here. At some point, doesn't that living in the shadow almost sounds like, you know, something nice uh, where you don't have, you know, government controlled currencies, government controlled IDs. So this is very odd. So when it comes to elections, ID not necessary. But it went, when it comes to the issues of your daily life, then you definitely should have an ID for everything else. That makes me suspicious. There is a sense that governments in the West are extremely capable of controlling their own people, but they're completely incapable of controlling their borders, controlling crime, <laughs> and controlling illegal immigration. And I think people are th that sentiment that people have, that distrust that is fed by this, is justified. I can only stress this enough. Like There is something going on that is truly malevolent and that should worry us all. And just very, very quickly, Ralph, uh, the farmers' protests, uh, just within 30 seconds, uh, what's happening with the farmers' protests across Europe? Finally, Germany, right? We've been talking about this for almost two years. Finally, the Germans rise up. There is this story from Lenin who said when the Germans try to storm a train, they buy first the ticket. <laughs> so if, the, if the Germans start to move, then, then it means something. And one last sentence. All of this is great for a very simple reason. I cannot tell you how it ends, but this is what democracy is supposed to be. If people are dissatisfied, they can voice it and then they can force governments to change course. So all these people that are, according to the mainstream media, a threat to democracy, they're exactly the opposite. They're the best example of a working democracy and they deserve our full support, even if we don't agree with them on all the issues. Fantastic, Ralph. So much, so great to always talk to you. And I hope people notice that all those Germans protesting against climate change policies were protesting in thick, heavy snow. What an <laughs> irony.